Good morning! Oh, the energy is in the air! Are you ready? It's the big day! Time for some football! Time for some rockin' competition! We may be church, but we're ready for some fun. The energy is palatable. We're so glad you're here. Because it is Football Sunday. It's like this every week. Not really. Not really. If you are a guest, I just want you to know that, yes, the garden is a little bit off every week. Uh, but Union Chapel is very, very uh, traditional. If, if, so we're going to let you go in there, and we'll let you, uh, we'll let you get that, uh, that traditional fix. Elizabeth! Yes! Pastor of Union Chapel, can you just feel the energy in the air? We are ready to go. All right. Thank so, you all for being here. Go ahead. No, I, well, I, today is a little, a little different. A little different, a little healthy competition. Healthy competition, because I heard there's a game later today. There is a game to be played today. Okay, and yes. who's, who's playing later today? The Colts. Oh, no. I don't oh, think it's so. Not? I don't think so. It's the... The, the, the Bengals and the unicorns. Bengals and unicorns. Bengals and Rams. Who's, who's rooting for the Bengals? Who's rooting for the Rams? Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Very good. Well, we're going to, as Pastor Carolyn says, have a little healthy competition here. But first, want to thank you for being here. Invite you to just make yourselves at home. Live into some fun. Uh, scripture says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So Come we're going to live into some joy this morning. If you have financial gifts for either ministry, know that there's ways to do that, even though we're worshiping together today. Uh, the Garden has their gift center out there. Union Chapel Indy is out here. Uh, let us know if you have any questions about that. And I want to make some introductions now as we get into worship. Union Chapel Indy uh, and the Garden have each pulled together an all-star team to, to duke it out a little bit this morning. So I'm going to introduce Union Chapel team. As I introduce you, stand up, please. We have got facility manager Tony Matucci. <laughs> I want to scare anybody on the other team, but he can lift cars. Okay? Literally. Literally. Okay. We have Kim Sandell. <laughs> and we have Director of Music and Discipleship, Jacob Tippentasic Wolverton. <laughs> Go Team Union Chapel. And representing the garden today. On the front lines and behind the scenes for worship team and triathlete and man on the run, David Bradley. Today we decided we would let her leave from behind the camera and put her in front of the camera. Mary Friend. When we heard a few weeks ago that Greg Baker can feed 5,000 in a minute, we knew right away he was the man for the team. We only later found out he has a bad knee, but that's okay. Greg Baker! And for 
providing color commentary this morning for our competition will be Pastor Carolyn Absolutely. and Kevin Wanzer. And on the sidelines, our very own Elizabeth Gilbert. And Lisa Loren. And if you want to know anything that is going on in Union Chapel from the bathrooms to the bell, Lisa Lorenz. Okay. You, you yeah. know what? What? I have uh, literally been so excited about this yeah. uh, that I am so glad that we have some future players in the room. Absolutely. Yeah, are there are there any kids who want to join me for a minute? Come on up. Come on up. Okay, so. So there's a game later today, right? Big football game on TV, right? Yep. Okay, and what happens when two teams come together to play a game? They fight. Yeah, they battle it out. Yeah, they fight over the football. They fight over the football. CK? Uh, they compete? Yeah. yeah? And, and somebody wins, and somebody loses. Yeah, there's always somebody wins, somebody loses in a game, right? Unless it's a tie. Unless it's a tie, and that's my favorite outcome. Yes, I love it when people tie. Today, we're going to compete, and that's what we've been talking about. Two teams are going to compete, but we're going to compete on not football, but on some mission projects some projects that will help some other people. And we'll talk more about those as we go along. But I wonder who you're going to cheer for in these competitions. The Garden, Union Chapel Indy. The Garden, <laughs> Union Chapel Indy. <laughs> okay. Okay. What do you need if you're going to cheer? Huh? Anybody want one? Pick one out. Anybody want one? Huh? Pick one out. Want one? I don't want one. You don't want one? That's okay. Anybody else? Nope. Yes, you can. Is there another red one? There you go. You want a different color? You can, yeah, well, I don't think there's enough for everybody to have two. You got, everybody got one that wants one? All righty. So here's the thing, you guys. When the teams are competing, you're going to shake your pom-pom and you're going to root for your team, Okay. But here's the thing. I want to tell you a secret. Come in here because we don't want the grown-ups to know. Come in here. Come in here. Listen careful. In the kind of competitions we're doing where it helps somebody else, everybody wins. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So you can cheer for everyone, okay? You know, but don't tell them yet. You know that he heard since you had him. I know. Uh, they're not paying any attention to me. Okay? So, you're going to cheer, and we are going to see who comes out on top. Right? Right? Okay. Back to your seats. Get ready to cheer. Woo! Thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah. 
about tying prayer blankets. But first, Lisa Lorenz is going to tell us about the prayer blanket ministry. blankets that go to <laughs> folks who have experienced trauma, our neighbors who have had their houses burned down, um, anyone who seeks to have a little bit of comfort, anyone who could be a part of this team, who can be a part of the hearts and hands team here, who you can. You can, you can, everybody can. We've had four-year-olds. We've had 94-year-olds come and, and meet two Mondays a week. Uh, one is a lunchtime. One is an evening. Anybody is available. And this is so technically difficult that you'll see soon. You can do it with socks on your hands. All right. Anybody interested in uh, coming and helping us with hearts and hands in the future? Contact me. Thank you. Anyone? Anyone? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's see the competitors. Let's do it. Teams, can we have you back at the Blanket Time Woo! Station? Woo! Oh, Kevin, it's going to be a big day here on the field. It's going to be a big day on the field. I can feel it. I can feel it. Uh, I believe that Mary was involved in this competition for the Olympics, but she dropped out just to be here for the garden. Yes, yes. Hey, teams, garden. listen up. Here. Garden, 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 garden. Garden. Your task, you will... You can't... Nope. When I say go... Socks on, one sock on each hand like mittens, and you will have three minutes to see how many knots you can tie with blanket. The team that ties with socks on the winner. Okay? Do they have to connect? They have to connect. <laughs> oh, Kim has been working out for this for a long while. Look at that, Greg. Even with the bad knee, even with the bad knee. There you they go. It. There you go. Yes. There's there. Oh, we're getting some thank time. Six months so far on Team Red. All right. We come over to Team Blue. We're working feverishly. Looks like we have a couple of knots here. Oh, my goodness. We have a couple of knots here. Oh, my goodness. A couple of knots here. We have four, five, six, seven, and eight. Team Blue. So, Mary, tell me, how's it going? Oh, my you can do it, pressure, you can do pressure, it, keep up. Pressure. All right, here we go back to Team Red. We have Mary, who's done many things with socks on her hands, but not this. There you go, she, you're doing uh, it. Kim, Kim, how you really doing? Hard. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> no, All right, we got two minutes left. We're, we're at two minutes or two minutes left? I just want to note that we're both. Two minutes. All right, Mary, you got it down. Dave are showing Mary's us their best sides. Mary's going to start wearing socks on her hands all the time. Uh, there we, we go. The blue team. We are working oh, the hard. concentration that Jacob oh gosh, has going look over this. here. They're running the table. Look this at is that gonna concentration. Be a tough one to, to call. We have, uh, let's see here. Boy, Greg, you, uh, Greg, tell us what's going on. I think they're born with I'm socks on their the hands. <laughs> here we go. And, uh, Keep it going. I'm we have over here we have the red team <laughs> struggling a little bit more than the blue team. The blue team, uh, the, the blue team is doing pretty good. So is the red team. What, what was that, Greg? I'm a little You're doing it. You're doing it. Two knots. Keep going. Uh, I, uh, yes, how do you they're feel about this, Mary? Oh, my gosh. The pressure. The congregation is mesmerized. Have you practiced for this? No. No practice. No practice at all. How are you doing? I'm That's doing all right. You're doing good. At least you can touch the blanket. That's good. One all right. minute. Here we go. One minute. One, One minute. This is I'm impressive oh work gosh. over here, guys. Blue team. They're like on the yes. second blanket. I know Double they are. Nine. I don't know how this happened. Okay, this is uh, although it may be closer than we think. Um, here we go. Mary is now untying knots. I don't want to say Tony knots. is competitive, but he's not willing to All talk right, to All right, well me. done. Here we go. It's gonna be a tough one to call, Carolyn. Pretty scary. I don't know. We're having a rough first Some half. Some of these have. Uh, we should have done oven mitts. Oven mitts would have been good. You know, whoever thought 
or your feet. Whoever thought you could go to church to tie one on? Huh? Oh, there you go. I like that. Very nice. Oh. Okay, we're we going to cover this one. Ooh, 20 seconds It looks to go. like we're running Boy, a pretty smooth, pretty even competition here. Remarkable. We've got the whole side of the blanket down here remarkable almost. Remarkable on this we're gonna first We're going to have to count up the knots. Wow. All right, here we go. Five, five, four, three, two, one. Step away from the blankets, please. Give it up for the team. Well done. Whoa. Well done. Water boy, we need a water boy here. Water All right. boy. All right, I'll I'll count. Yes. Lisa, Lisa's still here. I'm here. Can you count the ones over here on the plaid? Right. What kind of strategy did you have? <laughs> <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I need a challenge on the field. Throw your pom pom down. 14, 15. <laughs> so, 16, Kevin, how many 17, do we have? 18. We're still counting. We're oh, wow, long. there must be a lot. Are you counting all the double tie clubs, right, Lisa? Yes. <laughs> so, so, how did you. 30, 30, it looks pretty good on both sides. Who thinks I, Team I, Blue, I, I Team too. Union Chapel, did it? <laughs> Who thinks Team Red? All right, we have our answer. Do you have your answer? Okay. Who do we have for we Team have, Blue? Hey, oh, hey. Sorry? What do we have for Team Blue? 49. 49. 37. Oh! That was a close one. That's Good a try, win guys. for Good Team try. Blue. That's a win, Good, win. Or, or Team Red. That team really Red. sucks. That's a win for Team Red. Good job. Let's celebrate. All right, well done. <laughs> Thank you. 
the food pantry as the teams make their way up here to me. Lisa's going to tell us about the food pantry. The uh, food pantry here at Union Chapel is another equipping ministry, is another ministry that you also can participate in, both in terms of collecting items for the pantry, which we often have uh, posted around, and if you have any questions, let me know about that, but also should you encounter someone in your life who has a need, please let us know and we can provide an emergency box of food that provides some uh, sustenance for a family for 24 to 48 hours. So just let us know if you find that there's a need out there and we will equip you to be the minister to that family. Lisa, thank you, thank you. And you all, you all help uh, stock our food pantry today by bringing cans of soup and other items that can be helpful. We especially ask for pop-top cans when that's uh, something you can purchase because many of these go to folks who don't have a kitchen or, or supplies to cook. And so a pop-top, you don't need a can opener or anything else. So thank you for your contributions. Teams, are you ready? Absolutely. They Yes, the goal, the, the team that stacks their cans the highest on the table wins. The cans are back where people dropped them this morning. Mm. So part of your task is to bring them from there up here. And okay? also they, they're going to have yeah. oven mitts and be um, high cocked. Yes, yes. yes. So we'll do that. Yeah. Now if you're in this center aisle, you're going to want to just watch your toes a little bit. I saw some of you already pulling them back in. You're going to want to do that. You will have three minutes okay oh. all right are you Lord ready mercy teams ready on your mark get set go here come the super <laughs> oh look at this we got a block right in the middle that was a good strategy right there you see they went around whoa whoa that Is was that amazing legal? i, I think, think they get an extra legal. can just for that that was incredible cans are falling oh, all over the come. place here they cans come are falling all here, over. here we go come. here we go jacob's up front we're ready to go as high as you can. Oh my gosh, it looks like Union Chapel really has a lead on this one. They're already up to two cans high. Two cans high. It's as high as you can make it. Oh, here's an interesting strategy. We're going to have all the, the chunky soups together. Chunky holds together a little bit better than the others. Oh, and cans are falling all around on the ground. Somehow we have mandarin peaches. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay, now they're going for an interesting strategy here because this could be Jenga. We have Mary who's taking her time to kind of build a pyramid. And we have Team Blue, which is probably two one, two, three, two four, minutes. five, six, seven, two eight, minutes. nine, ten. Ten cans high, Mary. Ten cans. Here we go. Now the time comes where you must close your eyes. Close your eyes. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to close your eyes. Although that would make it much more interesting, wouldn't it? It's amazing to me, Kevin. Or if they did it backwards, that would be I've never quite seen anything like this. Or if they put socks on their feet. Okay, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Team Blue is uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, oh, twelve cans in the air. My. How much time do we have, Timekeeper? You are at one minute and Woo! 25 seconds left. 
Just one minute and 25 seconds. Food. This is not going to be good. It's the Vienna sausages that's going to be their, their downfall. It's the Vienna sausage. Oh, we got stealing cans. We're stealing cans from the other team. The Vienna sausages looking pretty up there. Okay, it's whoever, whoever's the highest. Right now, Team Blue is definitely the highest. Oh, oh we're doing the know. same strategy. All right, at the end, you have to step away one from, from, oh my gosh, one Team minute. Red is now in the lead. One this minute. is, uh, oh, we know the Vienna sausage has oh. come in at the last second. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. Oh, no, <laughs> Team Red, that would not have been good. No one wants to drink soup that's been spilled. I'm All right, here we go. Hey, uh, Joe, oh, you we have Jacob who has the height down. advantage. Jacob really, it's touching the ceiling. The blue team is now touching the ceiling. The red team looked over for just a bit. They were a little concerned about that. Seconds. Oh, Kids, we have the red team. The red team is taking team? a different strategy. Are you for your team? All right, it looks pretty equal to me right now. I don't know. Oh about no, that. look oh, what oh, the red oh, team's oh, doing. Oh, the red oh, team is oh, putting it over oh, the top. Oh, you must be able to step away. Oh, look at that! Red team! Oh yeah, you have to. You have to be able to, is, is time Six, up? How much time is left? Five, four, three, two, one. You must step away. Oh! <laughs> Team Blue comes in for the win. Oh, that was so man. close. That was so close. Congratulations, Vienna Sausage Team. Epic, oh. epic. It's the sausage. Sausage you know, wins every time. Rumor has it it's the Vienna Sausage, but I also think baby holding has helped this team quite a bit. You think what? Yeah, they've got yes. some good muscles going on. They have just on. had uh, a great deal of time holding babies on yes. this team. Yes. And I believe that baby holding just really came in handy. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we had Carter back there. Emmy, it was a very Emmy, enthusiastic uh, helped cheerleader. Emmy prepare them. And uh, boy, Garden, what happened? Tell me what happened. Please note that any dents in the canvas are from the competition, not from beforehand. Yeah. Gotcha, oh. gotcha. What happened, Greg? What happened? Foul. We got blocked out at the beginning. Should have had a flag on that. Referees here. You guys, <laughs> you deserve to be off the field. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we have, there, we right? have one Very for scary. red, the garden, and one win for blue, Woo! Union Chapel Indy. Commentators will confer and declare a winner when we move into the sanctuary in a minute. That sounds like a winner. But right now, let's celebrate the good competition. All We're right, having. let's go.
a good time. One more mission project and you all are going to help make this one happen. All right. But first Lisa's going to tell us about blessing bags. This is one of those games where everybody wins and another one of those ministries where everyone gets to be a part of the solution. Blessing bags, you've probably seen them out front, are our pantry on wheels. There are love in the community. You can grab one as you go out the door. It has some essentials for folks who might be homeless or in need, but also please feel free to customize your kit or make them yourselves so that you can take one to a friend who might be having a tough moment, but also keep one in your car in case you see someone on the corner who might need a little bit of help. Blessing bags are basically love on wheels. Thank you for participating please feel free to take one as you leave today. Lisa, thank you, thank you. Okay, now team, everybody's on this team and here's your instructions. We are gonna move from this space into the sanctuary to hear from some NFL players that you'll recognize. And for real, trash for real. There. Um, on your way in, you, you can build a blessing bag. Pick up a bag, put one of each item in it, go into the sanctuary, place your blessing bag up at the front on the steps. We'll pray over those before we leave, and then we'll continue worship in there. So, and I know, I know what's going to happen. But in about five minutes, we're going to start the videos over there. So you're going to want to scoot or join us whenever you're done with your blessing bag. Everybody ready? Break! Okay. And one of mine, too. All right. Well, come on in. Find a seat. Somebody can bring blessing bags up if you don't want to make your way all the way up. Thank you, Kim. Okay, so we've had some good competition. Blue team, red team, Union Chapel, the garden. Absolutely. Lots of good going on. I'm going to turn it over to our color commentators, Pastor Carolyn, Kevin Wander, to declare a winner. All right. Kevin, here we come. I don't know if the red team is still so down about that last loss that we have totally and completely lost them. Here they come. Here red they team. come. Woo! Mary. All right. So, Kevin, if you could get on that side, I'm going to get on this side, and we're going to do it. Uh, if you guys could take elbows, and uh, I'm going to declare a winner. Yeah, you do too. You ready to do this? Do this with that one. Ready? There she comes. There she comes. Go on over. Ladies and gentlemen. And the winner, winner is, is everybody. everybody. Woo! All right. Although I think the red team put their hands up a little bit fast. Did they? <laughs> Thank you all. You know, when we love, everybody wins. Thank you all for helping us highlight some of our loving ministries and missions. You get new t-shirts because red and blue, we're in it together. So what do you get? Purple. Can we thank our competitors for helping us out this morning? Woo, woo, woo. And thank you to our commentators. Thank you to everyone for their help.
became Quakers. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. Good try. <laughs> I know. Well, on this football Sunday, there are a whole lot of people for whom football is the most important thing. They've made a career of, out of it. They've provided for their families out of it. They've invested their time, their energy, and emotions in it. They've made it their life's work. And it would be reasonable to assume that all those players that we are going to see on the field later, that this is the case, that their whole life is about football, and they've made it to the top of their game. It'd be safe to assume that, but that is not the case. I invite you to hear Indianapolis' own Carson Wentz talk about what is even more important than football. Grew up in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. I was extremely active in sports. That was pretty much my life. Parents got divorced when I was seven. I was a good kid. I stayed out of trouble. You know, we, we went to church. It was kind of just something we did. It's kind of something we checked the boxes, so to speak. And I thought I was right with God because I was a good kid. I listened to what my dad said. I didn't want to get in trouble. Didn't want to miss sports. Kind of all those things, all those factors in my mind made me think I'm good. And then I go to college. And at that point, it's, okay, you're no longer in your parents' house. It's time to grow up, make your own decisions. I remember one of my first practices. It was a senior quarterback at the time named Dante Perez. He ends up asking me, hey, man, you ever read the Bible? It was our first practice. I just got done learning about two-jet protection and what the X has on the certain plays and all these things. My head's spinning. And he wants to talk about the Bible. And I'm kind of taken back. At the same time, though, I was like, here it is. Because I knew God was kind of moving. And from that moment on, him and I started talking. He was a mentor to me. We read the entire New Testament and met up, you know, at least once a week and, and talked through the Word. And it just came to life to me. You know, it was really eye-opening to me. I always said I was a believer in Jesus, but I didn't really know what he did for me. You know, I thought it was all about what I could do for him. And when that kind of mindset was flipped on its head and that it was already done for me and that it was a thing called grace and I could live for him freely and not out of rules and obligation, it, it just changed my life. We met actually in the country of Haiti and she was there serving uh, with an organization called Mission of Hope. And this was after my rookie year went down on a mission trip with the, the church that we go to out here in uh, New Jersey. We ended up talking and I just, just to see another woman that, that was truly after God's heart in that moment um, and trying to serve him the way that uh, I was trying to live as well. About a year and a couple months later, we were married. And now we have a, a daughter who's uh, seven months old now and, and she is an absolute joy. It's been, uh, it's been quite the journey together so far. We were all on this, on this high as a team. You know, I was um, in the MVP conversation, and our team was. You know, we just clinched the NFC East, and all sorts of good things going. And uh, my season was done. And for me, I've fa I've had a fair share of injuries, but never something like that. Never something where I literally had zero control of my life. I, I couldn't walk. I couldn't get off the couch to go to the bathroom by myself. I couldn't just complete control I had to be surrendered believe me I wasn't the best patient I was frustrated I was crabby it was a trying time but to look back at it and to see you know we go on to win the Super Bowl everyone knows that story and, and I was not out there and to walk through that um, obviously it was tough at the time and I still look back and think it was a tough time but I know God was moving in my life and he wanted me to know that he loves me so much that my relationship with him is far more important than winning a Super Bowl, than being on that stage in my uniform, than playing in that game, but ultimately playing for his glory and saying, God, your will be done. And just how God has had his hand from that moment on um, in my life, and, and I thank him for it. For me, I've always been a guy that, that wants to have control, and my selfishness and my want, desire for control has to decrease every moment. And it has to just allow God to increase in my life, to try my best to be spirit-led and not Carson-led. Sometimes I just look at my daughter and I kind of laugh because I'm like, she's mine. And the way I love her that I can't even explain or understand, I know doesn't even compare to how much God loves us. It almost makes me emotional sometimes because I'm just like, this is my daughter. And God, you gave your son to die for, for me. 
And I'm like, I would never let anything happen to this little girl because she is mine. Like, because of how much he loves me, he was willing to allow his son to go through the agony of dying on that cross. And I think that is when the peace just rushes over me. And I think, all right, God, there's so much more at play than the X's and O's of football, than the highs and lows of wins and losses. And that gives me peace. What an incredible story, isn't it? To think about, uh, I think it's time for us to get a new little outfit. First of all, we got to find a little football. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I, I'm so moved by the last part of that story where he talked about the love that he has as a parent for his children. But how much greater love does God have for all of us, right? What an incredible thing to think about. And it's, it's sometimes hard to keep our faith in focus, isn't it? When life presses in on us, it's sometimes hard to keep our faith in focus and, and to think less about ourselves and more about, okay, God, where are you moving? And Carson's story was uh, an incredible example of that. Now, I think about this next person that we're going to share about, Drew Brees. Now, uh, he started out here in Indiana at God's University. <laughs> Yes, that's correct, Purdue University, everybody, boiler, there we go, and everybody from the south, you got that other team down there, I'm so sorry, have you heard, excuse have you me, Purdue? there's one in the middle, uh, there is one in the middle, uh, yeah, but, but has the one in the south produced an NFL player quite like that, I'm I do just, believe the one in the middle saying, has I'm done quite saying. well with uh, oh, okay. basketball, so, so our little rivalry, Butler uh, University, go ahead, oh, yes, you sir. did do well, didn't you, yeah, yeah but saying. we're talking about football, Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Drew Brees is the next person that we're going to talk about and, and hear from. And uh, we're going to take a listen to what Drew has to say about seeing with eyes of faith. Take a listen. You go to Sunday school, um, you enjoy hearing the, the, the Bible stories. And then you go uh, to you know the big the big sermon the big church, and you sit there and I'm just you know me and my brother just kind of hitting each other just wondering when it's going to get over. <laughs> the second to last game of the season, third round of the playoffs. Um, I was the starting quarterback. Um, I suffered a torn ACL in my knee. It was devastating, devastating for me. Junior high school too. This was when. You're supposed to get recruited and just all of these things. I had to wait to have surgery for a month because they had to let the MCL heal before they repaired the ACL and then I was still on crutches and it was just, I'd hit that point. I had seen friends have that injury and never come back quite the same. So what I thought was just gonna be my life, sports, I felt like was being stripped away from me. And I remember sitting in church on my 17th birthday and sitting in that same pew where my brother and I used to just goof around and never pay attention. And for some reason that day it was different. And I was locked in um, on the pastor as he was sitting there talking about how the Lord was looking for a few good men to carry on his kingdom, to spread his word and to live the life that, that he had planned for them. And that spoke to me. And it was at that moment that I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart and knew that there was something that was bigger planned for me than just sports. fifth season, going into an off season in which I did not have a contract, I was going to be a free agent. I get hurt the very last game of the 2005 season with the San Diego Chargers. I never dislocated anything in my life, but I knew exactly what happened. And I knew too that besides maybe like a broken neck or something, that that is the absolute worst injury that I could ever have asked for for a quarterback. As I'm walking off the field with my shoulder stuck like this because it was dislocated, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm probably never going to put on a Charger uniform again. And then it hits me that, you know, I might not ever play football again. A few short months later, uh, my wife and I were taking a visit to uh, New Orleans, uh, it was six months post-Katrina, and we're just looking at the, the sheer devastation and just saying, I'm not going to trust what I see with my eyes here because my eyes are telling me not to come here. <laughs> and yet my heart, my soul, the Lord is telling me that this is our calling. Uh, it's not about just coming to play football and be a part of the resurgence of a, a football team or an organization, but it's about the resurrection and rebirth of a city and we can be a part of that. We 
score, the Colts are driving, we get the interception, we go score, now we're up 14 with three minutes left, and yet you're still thinking, I know Peyton Manning, I know this, this team. In your mind, you're going through all these scenarios of what you're going to have to do still, and then we get the ball back um, to basically take a knee to win the game, and it wasn't until that moment that, all right, we are world champions. As, as people do we want to see and touch and feel in order for it to be real for us and yet 2 Corinthians 5-7 I'll tell you we be led by faith and not by sight you know so much of life is that it's it's faith in God knowing that he's got a plan and at times you don't understand it and you're not going to see it um, and yet you just have to trust and you have to have faith Walk by faith and not by sight. And it seems to me like Drew Brees started that long before he was ever a professional football player in junior high school with that inner injury. What an important reminder to all of us, right, about what that journey looks like and keeping the faith through that journey. Not only these two football players, but a lot of football players walk by faith, including Case or Case Keenan and his wife Kimberly. They too walk by faith and they live their faith as they live on the journey. What I love about your experimenting in worship today is an example of you walking by faith. You came here today to be fed right? To get your heart filled so that you could go out in the world and, and be the person God has called you to be. Well, guess what? In this hour, you have fed others because you came here in faith and you let God guide you in the complete hour. And I give God thanks that you made it over here and that you made it through this service because that's what it takes. Take a listen now as Kay's Keenum and his wife talk about how they too live their faith. First memories of each other. Uh, we played flashlight tag throughout the church, you know, at night. I remember seeing her run back to base and not not remembering her name exactly, but her older brother, Brandon, who I was better friends with at the time. I said, uh, I, I got you, Brandon's little sister. And uh, I turned around and I said, That's not my name. And I ran to base. I don't know if that was the start of our <laughs> romance, but uh, it was definitely one of our first memories of each other. You know, coming into to college, I was consumed by football. Um, you know, was, I'm a competitive person. You know, when it didn't come easy, uh, you know, I struggled with it. You know, throwing one bad pass at practice or having a mistake, you know, here or there, uh, you know, really consumed me. And it was a lesson I, I, I continually learned from freshman year all the way up to senior year when I hurt my knee that I was not just a, a football player that happened to be a Christian. I was a Christian who happened to play football. Jesus really commanded us with his very last breaths before he left earth. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One of the best parts of that verse, one that really struck home for us, is that word go. It's not just, not just go, but it's as you are going. So uh, for me as a football player, uh, for her as a, as a wife, um, you know, whether you're a businessman, teacher, you know, construction, whatever you're doing, you know, as you are going, as you are doing those things, make disciples. It's not slapping them in the face with the Bible, but living our life as close as we can to chasing after Jesus. You know, coming out of college, I was un undrafted, signed Houston Texans, signed with the St. Louis Rams, signed back to the Houston Texans at the end of that year, and then traded back to the St. Louis Rams. Moved with the St. Louis Rams to L.A. and then signed with the Minnesota Vikings and then this past season signed with the Denver Broncos. Moved four times in one year, right? Six times in seven. <laughs> in 
any place we've been, I, I never want to leave that place without giving the best I've got, without getting to know as many women as I possibly can. I don't want to waste that year. I want to help point others to Jesus, no matter what I'm doing. And that is absolutely our goal as we are going. You know, one of those big things that we've um, you know, prayed about and talked a lot about is, is having kids, having children. You know, a few years ago, decided that we were you know, not going to not try anymore. You know, and then a few years passed by and, you know, nothing was, nothing was really going, so we started to get a little more serious about it. And uh, over the course of a, a few, you know, bumps in the road, some, some different uh, procedures, some different things that we've had to go through, um, you know, we're still praying that God's, you know, plan has, has children for us. Having kids is not going to give me this ultimate happiness. Like, yes, it's going to be so joyful and amazing, and I cannot wait for, hopefully, the Lord to provide that in our lives. But I still feel like He's just teaching us so much to find the ultimate joy in Him and in Him alone and just peace in Him. And I feel like the Lord has us in this time to be able to just have extra time to pour into other people. So many women do feel shame and do struggle with it so much and go through a lot more than what we've been through. And I just don't want to go through this time, like we were saying earlier, to be a waste. Like, I want to be able to still help point somebody to Christ through the midst of it. Like, I don't want to wait till I'm on the outside of it. I want, in the midst of it, as we're going, to help another woman going through this. And I understand it stinks, but like, God has purpose no matter where we're at in our life. There's not a doubt in our mind that God's plan is so much better than anything that we ever imagined. Heavenly Father, Please bless today's game for our opponents, for our team, and for all of us, all those who are watching us. Thank you for the opportunity to compete and to bring out the best in each other. May we play hard, may we play fair. Show us the opportunities to build each other up spiritually, emotionally, and physically. We ask these in the same that in these same actions that you um, deliver us doing these same things in our everyday life. Sometimes life does feel like a game, but in following, we can be strong, we can be brave, and we can be kind. Today, I would also like to provide a blessing upon these um, these bags here that were assembled by our team. May they these bags bring hope and love to all that receive them. Lord, thank you for everything that you give us each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, friends, thank you so much for being with us in this worship experience. I hope you uh, found something meaningful out of today. I think of often one of the ways that uh, we can give back to God is through our finances. And we invite you here to uh, give financially to the church. You can give uh, from thegardenonline.org. Uh, so on your way out, make sure you grab one of those uh, so that you can be a blessing to others. Uh, and I invite you to connect with us as we return next week back to our normal, normal times, Union Chapel, Indy, at 9.30, uh, and the garden at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Yeah, I got to think of those times sometimes, right? So friends, I invite you to stand as I uh, give you a blessing this morning. 
May the love of God and the peace that passes all understandings be with you as you go from this place. May the love and light of God shine through you in your community this week. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Go in peace.